Welcome, this is what is happening on the Sun today, the 11th of February 2012. With the rapid growth of Active Region 1416 and new regions coming over the northeast limb, I've been forecasting that we will be getting significant activity. As they say in the song, this could be the start of something big. I won't actually sing that because I want to keep most of my subscribers. But before we get into all of that, let's deal with our trivia question. It's a multiple choice today. Which of the following did not happen on this date? Governor Jerry gerrymandered for the first time. That would be in 1812. The University of London was founded. That would be in 1826. The first science fiction program was shown on television. That would be in 1938. Or the second mission to service the Hubble was launched. That would be in 1997. So which of those did not happen on this date? The answer will be given at the end. Region 1416 has continued to grow into a significant region. The perplexing thing is that it's been very reluctant to produce any significant flares. However, in the last day we've had four medium sea flares. And I'm expecting more if the region continues to grow. Here we have the last week's worth of sunspot data from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. We start the week with regions 1410 and 1413 nearing the northwest limb, but as they rotate off, they start to become more active. As they disappear, a new region starts to emerge in the southeast. That will become region 1416. It is now rapidly growing and may become one of the largest spot regions that we have seen in the south for a very long time. We also had a small region rotate onto the disk in the northeast. Noah seems to think that this is the remnant of 1402, but I am so sure. There is something much more extensive due to rotate onto the disk from behind the east limb in the next day or so, and my bet is that that's the old region 1402. We've had some spectacular coronal mass ejections in the last week. If you look carefully, you can also see a comet sneak along the dark support bracket in the southeast towards the end of this clip. The bright object moving in the opposite direction to the stars is Mercury. Let's take a closer look at the last two days and see if we can see the comet clearly. This time it's near the start of the sequence. With so many neat coronal mass ejections, there must have been some major eruptions on the surface of the Sun. Here we have a seven day video sequence from the Solar Dynamics Observatory showing the evolution of the transition region. See if you can see some of the eruptions. Now let's look for the same phenomenon in the corona. This is in iron 9 at 171 angstroms. It is equivalent to about 650,000 degrees Kelvin. Look carefully because the effects are much more subtle in the corona. Next we take a look at the active region corona at about a half million degrees Kelvin. The thing to look for here is the emergence of region 1416 in the southeast, the lower left. You can see the same emergence in the Solar Dynamics Observatory HMI Magram. In these images, white represents positive magnetic field and black negative. There are a lot of filaments on the sun at the moment. How and where do these form? Note the large areas of weak positive or negative magnetic field away from the strong sunspot fields. These are remnants of old active regions dispersed by the sun's differential rotation and carried towards the pole by a gentle drift of material that flows from the equator to near the pole. This is called the meridional flow. I have marked a large area of positive polarity in the northern hemisphere. Note that it is surrounded by a negative area. 
and marked a second area, this time negative, for the sound. It too is surrounded by a weak field of the opposite polarity. Therefore these dotted lines represent a neutral zone between the two opposing polarities. Hence they are called neutral lines. It is along these neutral lines that filaments and prominences form. As tension builds up in the fields, cooler material can be trapped along <clears throat> As tension builds up in the fields, cooler material can become trapped high in the solar atmosphere, forming what we call a filament on the disc or a prominence on the limb. Eventually, eventually it will become unstable and erupt as a coronal mass ejection or collapse and disappear. One of the things to note about the flares we've been seeing recently is that very many are quite impulsive. This is usually associated with rapid growth in a region and probably therefore originates from region 1416. From the composite SDO and stereo image of the corona, we can see a large complex that is cresting the east limb at the moment. But a few days behind it, we have another intense region. So overall, I'm expecting the sun to become much more lively in the upcoming week, compared with what it was last week. The solar wind has been dropping steadily over the last 24 hours, and the auroral zone is quiet. KP, KP index has been varying between 0 and 1, which is very quiescent. <clears throat> so now let's answer the trivia question. 1. Indeed, Governor George Eldridge Jerry was documented as the first to attempt to gerrymander in 1812. 2. The University of London was founded on this day. The original buildings are now called University College London, and it is where I did my undergraduate degree. In 1938, BBC aired the first science fiction program on television. It was called URU and coined the term robot. And lastly, the second Hubble servicing mission was launched on this date in 1997. That all of these alternatives are correct. To find out more about what's happening on the sun, follow the links in the description box below. If you like this video and like to see some of my other videos, then you can go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you'd like to keep abreast of what's happening on the sun, then you'd be more than welcome to subscribe. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.